Welcome back. Welcome back. 25 years of civil war in Sri Lanka may come to an end in a few days if the predictions of the government and the army are to be believed. Victory over the Tamil Tiger rebels, they claim, is within their grasp. But would the end of the war necessarily signal peace and have the humanitarian costs of this desperate race to the finishing line destroyed any prospects for reconciliation? Joining us now from Colombo to help us address these questions is the Foreign Minister of Sri Lanka, Rohitha Bogalagama. How, how long do you think it will take for there to be a complete, complete victory, a complete finish to the hostilities? Is it a matter of days or weeks or months? In fact, Sir David, we have made very good progress in this regard. I think uh, since we talked to each other last over these channels, you have seen the progress we have made in the uh, engagement uh, in terms of uh, completely countering terrorism in Sri Lanka. Our success story will become a model soon to the whole world. In a democracy, we have been able to counter terrorism, and our time framework is something that we are very flexible because we are also conscious of the civilian aspect of this matter, because we have a policy where there is zero tolerance of civilian casualties. So when we go into these areas, we have first our priorities, the civilian well-being and their protection from that of the LTT fire. And this is how we are approaching our final leg of this entire process. It took 27 years for us to come this far. And today we have achieved a great deal of success. And the LTT is today confined uh, into a very small, thin area in the entirety of the northern province. And it's a matter of uh, time now for the LTT to be completely taken off from the Sri Lanka map as a terrorist organization. And we are soon will be embarking in terms of our political process in line with the aspirations of our people. Now, in that situation, um, what, what happens next? I mean, you have, I think the president has said, for instance, very clearly that there will be no negotiated surrender. Uh, the Tamil Tigers have to provide an unconditional surrender. That's, that's your stand, your position, yes? Yes, obviously, for the reason that we have been negotiating with the, with the uh, Tigers for a very long time, starting in 1985 to 2006 and thereafter too, we went on uh, calling them for a negotiated settlement. Several times we called on them to surrender, to lay down arms and to renounce violence. And none of these calls were answered by the LTT. They stood by what they are best used to in terms of terrorism. And that has brought in this type of disaster for their own movement. And that's time for us to call for an unconditional surrender by the LTT because we want to free the people from the clutches of the LTT sooner than later. So towards that, we have to virtually call them for an unconditional surrender. And we hope that they will call for, they will respond to this because that's the only obvious uh, alternative they have at this very moment. There is a controversy here in London, Mr. Foreign Secretary, at the moment, very much about the uh, the Sri Lanka hospital that was shelled, and uh, and it, here is the your Defence Secretary told Sky News, the hospital is not within the unilaterally declared no fire zone set up by the government and is therefore a legitimate target. Is a hospital ever a legitimate target? Not at all. In fact, you had to read the uh, Defence Secretary's statement there in the context in which he really brought out these facts. In fact, there was no firing on the hospital, and also the hospital was not an occupied location in terms of any patients being there. And it is something that even the footage that went on is something totally distorted of the ground realities. In fact, there is a no-fire zone, and there is no fire being emanating from the, from the military uh, directed at the no-fire zone. Zone. It is the locations of the LTT with the armed locations of the LTT that is emanating fire from the no fire zone directed at the military. In spite of these locations, military has been very guarded because our policy, as I would like to repeat, is no tolerance of ca casualties uh, being lost. And therefore, we don't want a civilian casualty loss in this regard. We are very mindful of it. And I would like you to read the uh, Defense Secretary's statement in the context in which he meant it. because. 
there is no hospital that got targeted having patients and as a health uh, related or medical related location we are very mindful of all these aspects in fact our military has been always maintained the highest order of discipline and the conscious approach in terms of civilian issues and their security and in terms of in terms of the shelling that took place and the deaths that took place you're saying they weren't the army or the government so are you saying that the tamil tigers shelled this um, shelled this hospital to look at it not the not only the hospital you should have seen how the three uh, laden uh, if the lorry loads came in terms of explosives and exploded them say, with three tiger suicide carders coming in right onto the front defense line in very close proximity to the location of this hospital at that time. And it was a devastation of that location. And these are some things that sometimes we may not be able to tell you straight off. But today, you have raised this question. I'm happy to announce that the way that the tigers have been always responded in terms of taking advantage of the concessions we have been always trying to offer, looking at the benefit for the civilians, their protection, and there's a total abuse of those passages that we are trying to create. It is our duty to look after our people, and we are consciously working towards that, as our president has been repeatedly stated, and his final call also came to the, to the Tigers to lay down arms, renounce violence, and surrender. And that's an option they have right now on the table for them and this is something that they should take otherwise the, they are shrinking fast the area getting shrunk by the tigers is an area that is going to getting open up for the civilians so there's a major advantage that we are looking at the area getting shrunk for the tigers will become the space for the civilians and that is what we are after in right. terms of restoring democracy to all parts of Sri Lanka and when you say democracy for all parts of Sri Lanka um, what would be your ideal, if a, if a surrender happens and so on, what would be your settlement of the situation with the Tamil people, with the Tamil people? They would not be offered, obviously, a separate country anymore. Um, would they be offered um, an independent region? What, what, what would be your solution, briefly at the end here, what, what would be your solution? In fact, Sir David, solutions have been always been found. It is the tigers that uh, that obstructed that process. We have been uh, have not having an issue in terms of Tamil, Sinhalese, or Muslims in our country. This is not a, say, a racial divide that has found its way in Sri Lanka. It is democracy against terrorism, and this is how it got developed. And this is how we are looking at it. And our government, coming from a democratic country, and we are responsible for all parts of Sri Lanka. And our solutions will be within the framework of uh, Sri Lanka as a unitary country looking at the processes of greater devolution to all regions of Sri Lanka. This is something that we have already brought within the constitution of Sri Lanka in line with the Indo Lanka Accord. And our president has even said that he is prepared to explore uh, beyond the 13th Amendment in terms of the solutions that we are going to address. Well, thank you very much indeed, Foreign Secretary. It's very good to have you again. Thank you very much for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank you. And watching. That with me is Siren Surenderan from the British Tamils Forum. Uh, let me start, Siren, by asking you, um, do you agree that total defeat is, as the Foreign Secretary was saying, imminent for the Tamil Tigers? Well, the, a, any liberation um, battle, there's always um, some setbacks. But until the people's aspiration and the people's will um, is won, the hearts and minds of people are won, no battle or no war is won by anybody. So you mean that even if the, what is it, three years ago, 15,000 square kilometers down to 350 square kilometers today, if that comes down to zero, the battle will still go on? Sir David, um, in most of the liberation fighting, call it uh, ANC fighting the apartheid regime or the KLA fighting the Serbian regime, nobody controlled any land when they were fighting liberation. We must give credit to the Tamil leadership for battling against an oppress oppressive government and holding on to land so, for, so far. So, um, but I mean, they've virtually got none left, haven't they? Uh, it's, it's, the liberation is not about owning land. Liberation about winning freedom for the people. 
winning freedom for the Tamil people. Um, the Sri Lankan government is oppressive government. It's, uh, it's ca ca carrying out state terrorism. It's bombing its own people. It's indiscriminately bombing it from the air. It is the fourth country in the world to bomb its own people from air. USSR during two 1920s, East Timor was bombed by Indonesia. Saddam Hussein in, um, bombed the Kurdish rebels and now Rajapaksha government in Sri Lanka yes, against the Tamil. It, it's back and forth on that one, isn't it? Because at the same time, the Tamil Tigers have the uh, horrific uh, title of the people who invented suicide bombing. We are today, whilst we are talking, there are millions of people being displaced and hundreds of people are being killed. Sri Lankan government is bombing hospitals like you asked him. The media director, Hapugala, says people, civilians living within the LTT controlled area is not government's responsibility. Yesterday in the UK parliament, it was raised and the minister in charge of foreign affairs said it is the most irresponsible statement to be made by the government and the British government is very concerned about such human rights violations. Sri Lanka got evicted by the human, United Nations Human Rights Council only May last year because of genuine breaches of human rights and Geneva Conventions and U UN Charters. People like you, Sir David, to report from Sri Lanka, you will be killed. Lasantha Vijayatunga, the, the uh, editor, chief editor of Sunday Leader, got killed. The Lanka E! News editor and his wife attacked. And the private television company brutalized and, and bombed. But do you think, bearing all that in mind, if this war comes to an end, if the government win this war, but if the war comes to an end, um, will, will there be negotiations? Will there be actual peace breaking out? Or are you saying there can never be peace because, at, at heart, there can never be peace because of the hatred that has been born of this war for 25 years, 70,000 dead and so on, that that can never be cured? Because it was cured in South Africa. Sir David, Israeli aggression against uh, Hamas or Hezbollah is not going to solve the Middle Eastern problem until there is a two-state solution that will create peace and stability in Middle East for the people of Palestine and the people of Israel. Equally, when 61 years have gone past, successive governments have negotiated and withdrawn from such, such agreements that was uh, agreed between the Tamils and the Sinhalese, many times in the past, as recently as 2002, there was a ceasefire agreement that was signed up by the international community, was unilaterally withdrawn by the Sri Lankan government. So to create stability and peace and harmony in, in that region, there needs to be a two-state solution in Sri Lanka so that the Sinhalese and the Tamil ca Tamils can live together, live in peace and harmony within their own territories uh, as friendly nations. But as we've seen in the past, in, in the past the Tamils have withdrawn from the claim of a separate, a separate state, as you say. I mean, the, the Sri Lankan government having won this war, there's no way they're going to give the Tamils a state. They might give you a county or an area or a region, but they're not going to give you a state, are they? African National Congress wasn't asking from the apartheid regime or requesting from the apartheid regime their freedom. They were fighting for it, just like the Tamils are fighting for it, fighting for freedom, fighting against oppression, fighting against military aggression. But they won, and unfortunately for you, you're losing at the moment. Well, uh, like I said, until the Tamils' aspirations are satisfied, and until the hearts and minds of the Tamils are won, there is no battle or no war is being won. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you, sir. David. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Uh, nominated for a Best Director Oscar for every one of his three movies, Stephen Doldry joins me after the news headlines.